Pathetic. <laughs> oh, it's been quite a while out here, huh? Been wandering day and night. Get some wheat. Can cook that up later, huh? Nerano Ancestral Doom. I don't know if we've been here before, but I hope to find a limeware platter. Or limeware bowl. Oh, hello. Goodbye. Hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye. <laughs> eh. Oh, it's terrifying. I don't think I want to. Mm -hmm. Restore health. Okay. I'll try it. Yeah! You cast the shit out of each other. And now you die. Okay, he's not as scary as he looks, it seems. He's just a big softy, aren't you? Oh yes, he is. Bone meal and soul gem. I take soul gem. They seem to have a... Uh, a spell upon me. Hmm. Cannot wait. Oh, that's troublesome. <laughs> well, friends, finally I was able to recover my strength from the bone walker I've looted some of this uh, tomb Dreran did come along to help me out and uh, we could venture deeper but I hear something behind this door Dreran said he felt a great power and refused to uh, to follow me through it I did find also a wonderful book here which I should uh, should read to you now rather interesting the ransom of Zarek Jelmiel stood in her garden and read the louder her servant had brought to her the bouquet of joss roses in her hand fell to the ground for a moment it was as if all birds had ceased to sing and a sky a cloud had passed over the sky her carefully cultivated and structured haven seemed to flood over with darkness. We have thy son, it read. We will be in touch with thee shortly with our ransom demands. Zarek had never made it as far as that gun after all. One of the brigands on the road, orcs probably, or accursed Dunmer, must have seen his well-appointed carriage and taken him hostage. Jalamil clutched at a post for support, wondering if her boy had been hurt. He was but a student, not the sort to fight against well-armed men. But had they beaten him? It was more than a mother's heart could bear to imagine. Don't tell me they sent the ransom note so quickly, called a fa family voice, and a familiar face appeared through the hedge. It was Eric. Jelamil hurried to her boy, tears running down her face. What happened, she cried. I thought thou had been kidnapped. I was, said Zarek. Three huge soaring Nords attacked my carriage on Frivorn Pass. Brothers, as I learned, named Mathis, Ulin, and Coob. Thou should have seen these men, mother. Each one of them would have had trouble fitting through the front door, I can tell thee. What happened, Jelamil repeated. Were thou rescued? I thought about waiting for that, but I knew they'd send off a ransom note, and I know how that does worry. So, I remembered what my mentor at Akgun always said about remaining calm, observing my surroundings, and looking for thy opponent's weakness. Zarek grinned. It took a while, though, because these fellows were truly monsters. And then, when I listened to them bragging to one another, I realized that vanity was their weakness. What did thou do? They had me chained at the camp in the woods not far from Kale on a high knoll overlooking a wide river. I heard one of them, Korg, telling the others that it would take the better part of an hour to swim across the river and back. They were nodding in agreement when I spoke up. I could swim across that river and back in 30 minutes, I said. Impossible, said Korg. I can swim faster than a little whelp like thee. So it was agreed that we would dive off the cliff, swim to the center island, and return. As we went to our respective rocks, Korg took it upon himself to lecture me about all the fine points of swimming, the importance of synchronized movements of the arms and legs for maximum speed, how essential it was to breathe after only third or fourth stroke, not too often to lose thyself down, slow thyself down, but not too often to lose one's air. I nodded and agreed to all his fine points. Then we dove off the cliffs. I made it to the island and back in a little over an hour, but Korg never returned. He had dashed his brains on the rocks at the base of the cliff. I had noticed the telltale undulations of underwater rocks and had taken the diving rock on the right. But thou returned, asked Jelamil astounded. Was that when, not when thou escaped? 
It was too risky to escape then, said Zarek. I, they could have easily caught me again, and I wasn't keen to be blamed for Korg's disappearance. I said I did not know what happened to him, and after some searching they decided he had forgotten about the race and had swum ashore to hunt for food. They could not see how I had anything to do with his disappearance as fully visible as I was throughout my swim. The two brothers began making camp along the rocky cliff edge, picking an ideal location so that I would not be able to escape. One of the brothers, Mathis, began commenting on the quality of the soil and the gradual incline of the rock that circled around the bay below. Ideal, he said, for a foot race. I expressed my ignorance of the sport, and he was keen to give me details on the proper techniques for running a race. He made absurd faces, showing how one must breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, how to bend one's knees to the proper angle on the rise, the importance of sure foot placement. Most important, he explained, was that the runner keep an aggressive, but not too strenuous pace if one intends to win. It is fine to run in second place throughout the race, he said, provided one has the willpower and strength to pull it out in the end. I was an enthusiastic student, and Mathis decided we ought to run a quick race around the edge of the bay before night fell. Ulin told us to bring back some firewood when we came back. We began at once down the path, skirting the cliff below. I followed his advice about breath gate and foot placement, but I ran with all my power right from the start. Despite his much longer legs, I was a few paces ahead as we wound the first corner. With his eyes on my back, Mathis did not see the gape in the rock that I jumped over. He plummeted over the cliff before he had a chance to cry out. I spent a few minutes gathering some twigs before I returned to Ulin at camp. Now that were just showing off, frowned Jellemiel. Surely that would have been a good time to escape. No, I might think so, agreed Zarek, but thou had to see the topography. A few large trees, and then nothing but shrugs. Shrubs. <laughs> Ulin would have noticed my absence and caught up with me in no time, and I would have had a hard time explaining Mathis's absence. However, the brief forage around the area allowed me to observe some of the trees close up, and I could formulate my final plan. When I got back to camp with a few twigs, I told Ulin that Mathis was slow coming along, dragging a large dead tree behind him. Ulin scoffed at his brother's strength, saying it would take less time for him to pull up a live tree by the roots and drop it on the bonfire. I expressed reasonable doubt. I'll show thee, he said, ripping up a ten-foot-tall specimen effortlessly. But that's scarcely a sapling, I objected. I thought thou could rip up a tree. <laughs> his eyes followed mine to a magnificent, heavy-looking one at the edge of a clearing. Ulin grabbed it and began to shake it with a tremendous force to loosen its root from the dirt. With that, he loosened the hive from the uppermost branches, dropping it down onto his head. That was when I made my escape, mother, said Zarek in conclusion, showing a little schoolboy pride. <laughs> While well, Mathis and Korg were at the base of the cliff, and Ulin was flailing about, engulfed by a swarm. Jalamil embraced her son once more. Publishers now. I was reluctant to publish the works of Mar Basul, but when the University of Gwilym Press asked me to edit this edition, I decided to use this as an opportunity to set the record straight once and for all. Blah, 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 blah. So that is the book I found. I don't know what Draren meant about this door. I am hesitant to uh, take a look and find out, but it seems that that is what uh, what is coming next. It looks to be a ghost, perhaps. I saw his hand. Maybe I should ring of a version. Oops. This door was also trapped. So I had to use a cure poison potion. Oh, that looks bad, huh? Perhaps we can sneak. And get a nice hitting on him. I hope. Alright. Silver bow. Do your work. It didn't seem to work at all. Oh lord. Oh lord. He's here now. He's a vampire. And he's here now. Oh. He's drained all of my health with two spells. We need to go. Oh my goodness. Okay. Restore health. And run! Door! Door in the face! Oh my god. <laughs> that is terrifying. Yes, I know exactly what he means. <sighs> Draren, I should have listened to you a little better, my friend. Ah, so now we are back. In the big wide world. Let us see. We should probably go south. As I have not gone this way. We did stop by the little islands. Sadrith Mora and whatnot. But 
I'm sure there's more adventure to find. Should we wander in this direction? Hmm. What is this? Stone flower. Looks like death bell. But uh, I suppose the topography here is different. Oh, I hear you. My kitty ears here all. Disgusting. He stood no chance. He rushes to his death. Pathetic. Hmm. That is pretty, is not? I wish I were an artist of sorts. A wordsmith, yes, but uh, not an artist. I should like to capture this moment. The sun coming over the hill. Maybe the guar too. We could do that. Immortalize him. Just like that, and like that. Mm, he did get this hit in. But it turned out okay. As it always tends to do. Oh? What is this? Oh, this is a uh, boss. We've headed back. It was so pretty. I was... <laughs> I was entranced. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.